know, Governor Hogan signed the Greenhouse Gas Emissions Reduction Act, committing the state to a 40 percent reduction by 2030 in, in economy-wide emissions. Uh, we were extremely pleased to see that and to see Maryland taking such a strong leadership role by adopting one of the strongest emissions reduction targets in the country. But we're not going to get to that target unless Maryland also supports the state level and regional policies that will actually reduce those emissions. The, the target itself isn't going to just be met. It's not self-actualizing. REGI is really the, the core program that the state of Maryland has right now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And it's been an extremely successful program, not just in Maryland, but in the, the other eight REGI states, the, the nine states in total. Since the program came into effect, it's helped reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the power sector, which is a, a major contributor, of course, to the overall emissions, by more than 37 percent. It's estimated that REGI, in reducing conventional pollutants, smog and ozone and other pollutants from power plants, has saved the residents in the REGI region $10 billion in health costs, because we haven't had that pollution. The overall effect has actually been through reinvestment of REGI revenues that consumers in the region have saved hundreds of millions of dollars on their energy bills. The estimate from the REGI states themselves through 2013 is that residents have saved about $400 million uh, overall so far and are projected to save more than $2 billion from measures that have already been installed. There's every reason to expect that if Maryland and the other REGI states continue to reduce emissions and continue to take revenues that are generated through the, the quarterly REGI auctions and pump them into programs that have been proven to generate benefits, that those benefits will continue to accrue and that we will continue to see overall net positive benefits from REGI. The, the presentation that Luke gave showed the, the modeling showing you know, modest potential wholesale power increases that modeling doesn't yet take into account the reinvestment of those revenues. There's also significant reasons why we think that that modeling is conservative and is likely overestimating the potential costs. Um, one of those reasons is that the modeling doesn't fully take into account all of the state policies, including some recent policies that have been adopted by Massachusetts and Rhode Island to strengthen their uh, renewable energy standards and potential strengthening of renewable energy and energy efficiency standards in other states in the REGI region uh, between now and you know, the, the end of the the next cap. As those programs are implemented, they're going to make it a lot easier to reach these caps and they're going to reduce the, the overall cost effect of the program. The REGI trajectory really should go out to 2030. The, the Governor Hogan's commitment is a 2030 emissions reduction target. The Clean Power Plan is a 2030 target. If we're going to give certainty, or at least reasonable certainty, to power producers, we need to give them something like a 2030 target, which is longer term and provides the signal to make investments that are going to be in place for you know, at least that next 15 years and, and longer. I think adopting a, a shorter term cap, uh, sort of short term fix in the long run might actually be more expensive because companies won't be able to make the kinds of investments they need to, to prepare for a lower carbon economy.